What's going on, guys? Welcome back to From the Red Carpet. On today's episode, we have some set photos from the Fantastic Four First Steps, and it looks like a Friday the 13th series might be back on. All this and more, so let's dive right in. We have some set photos from the Fantastic Four First Steps. This is really exciting. With the cast of Marvel's First Family finally locked down and a recent display at D23, this movie is on its way to looking amazing. Not to mention, it's actually being filmed in a 1960s style, so it'll look more aged and gritty. I love it. Here, we can see Joseph Quinn suited up as Johnny Storm, showing off what their 1960s outfits will look like. As we know, the film is set in an alternate universe in the 1960s. Here, we can almost see Vanessa Kirby as Sue Storm. Kind of. We saw Pedro Pascal as Reed a while back, sporting a lab coat and some type of classroom. But the big news is Ebon Moss Bachrock as Ben Grimm. I heard recently that the thing will be mostly CGI, but this picture says otherwise. According to this, it looks like they're using practical effects, which I'm happy about. But either way, the movie's going to be freaking awesome. The Fantastic Four First Steps is due out on July 25th, 2025. We may see RDJ's Doom in Doctor Strange 3. So, Doctor Strange 3, which last I heard might be called the Dark Dimension, originally was going to have Doctor Strange and Clea go around trying to fix incursions caused by Kang. Then, the Black Priest, a group that Clea is with, accused Strange of causing the incursions himself, and they imprisoned him. This would make him absent for Avengers Kang Dynasty, causing them to lose, and yeah, I know, I'm ranting. Anyway, with Kang officially being replaced by Doctor Doom, the plan has changed. Now, the setting of the film will be in Battleworld, which puts Doctor Strange 3 after the events of Avengers Doomsday. It was said by Marvel Studios that mostly every film that occurs between Avengers Doomsday and Avengers Secret Wars will take place on Battleworld, which is Doctor Doom's amalgamated universe comprised of all the heroes from all over the multiverse, most of whom are under his control. There isn't much else known about the film currently, aside from Charlie Theron returning as Clea, Tom Hiddleston appearing as Loki, and also Tobey Maguire having some sort of cameo as Spider-Man. But there's no release date at this time. We've got an update for Spider-Man 4. For a long while now, Sony and Marvel Studios have been doing a tug-of-war over the plot of the next Spider-Man film. Sony wants it to be another huge multiverse film with Tobey and Andrew, just like No Way Home was while Marvel Studios wanted it to be more of a grounded, street-level movie featuring Daredevil and the Kingpin. This led into Sony blocking Marvel Studios from using any Spider-Man villains that they've already used theatrically, meaning that Marvel Studios could never feature Kraven, Morbius, Venom, Carnage, Rhino, or the Chameleon in a live-action film. But that's alright, there's plenty of villains still left over. But that's not the point. The point is, Sony is trying to dominate the situation, and it looks like they may have won the plot battle. The film is set to release in July of 2026, which is in between Avengers Doomsday and Secret Wars. Meaning that, like I just mentioned before, the film will take place on Battleworld. There hasn't been any other news in regard to Toby and Andrew popping back up in this one, but they are set to return in Secret Wars. The villain is still going to be Scorpion and Kingpin as far as I know. Nothing changed there. And as far as Peter getting the symbiote suit, well, that hasn't been mentioned. If it does happen, though, it'll probably happen in the Secret Wars movie. One thing that has been mentioned is the introduction of Miles Morales into the MCU. With the whole multiverse falling apart by the time Avengers Doomsday is over with, it would be a perfect time to introduce Miles. Plus, allegedly, Marvel's contract with Sony doesn't include Miles Morales, so maybe they can use him freely without Sony trying to dictate everything. But I guess we'll have to wait and see how this one plays out. The Crystal Lake series may still have a chance. So we heard that A24 was going to be putting out a Crystal Lake series based in the Friday the 13th universe. This series was going to start off as a prequel, telling the story of how Jason drowned and focusing on his mother Pamela as the killer. But as the series progressed, it would then change to Jason coming back and donning his classic mask and doing what he does best. Well, that all got abruptly flushed down the drain, especially with the showrunner Brian Fuller leaving. And then, any hope for a Jason series was pretty much slim. But, as of now, Brad Caleb Kane, the showrunner for the new It series, Welcome to Derry, is set to be the showrunner for this one as well. 
so it looks like things are back on. However, the plot isn't going to be the same as it was. With that being said, there's no news as to what the new plot will be, or when we can expect this series out. I'm just happy that we're getting a Jason series at all. Lastly, we have a new trailer for Terrifier 3. So the third installment of the Terrifier series is set to hit theaters on October 11th, and will have David Howard Thornton back as Art the Clown. This time, the film will have a Christmas theme, and Art will be dressed as old Santa Claus. Also in the film is Samantha Scafidi back from the first film, and Chris Jericho and Lauren Lavera back from part two. Let's check out the trailer. He survived the most famous serial killer since Jack the Ripper. The five-year anniversary is coming up. I think a lot of people would really like to hear from you after all this time. Want to know what it's like to be in the presence of that kind of evil. What goes through your brain when he's close enough to you and feel his breath. sure it was really him. I could feel it. Who is this Santa? He's scaring my kid. Yeah, he's scaring me too. Hey, Santa's handing out presents! Julian, <laughs> Why would he come back here? Even if he was alive, which he isn't. When you want to get as far away from here as possible, as far away from you, we both know this isn't over. I have to go back to the Terrifier. It's still buried there, isn't it? it? Might be the only thing that can stop them. to the best Christmas ever, filled with fun, smiles, and laughter. Alright guys, well that does it for this episode of From the Red Carpet. If you enjoyed the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more. And while I have you here, did you know I have a second channel? Recently I started a second channel called Chris Hollywood Productions where I uploaded a lot of my own home movies from over the years. Also, there are full seasons of October Horror Fest, a pint and a playthrough, and some other cool stuff. So if you have a second, go on over there and check it out. And with that being said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.